What's good? Welcome or welcome back. My name is Asia and I create analytical videos about intentional and practical fashion and personal style. Today we are going to talk about how to choose the right shoes for certain bottoms or outfits. Now, are shoes really that important? Yes. Shoes will make or break your outfit. You could create the best outfit that the world has ever seen ever in the history of mankind. But once you put on the wrong shoes, you are over, done, canceled. An outfit is simply not an outfit without the right shoes. But how do I choose the right shoes? Well, luckily for you, I got you. We are going to go over what types of shoes you should wear for various types of bottoms, like jeans, trousers, leggings, different types of skirts and shorts. If you would like a part two that explores dresses, jumpsuits, and rompers, please let me know in the comment section down below. This video just got too long. <laughs> I also got a lot of requests in my last couple of videos to include examples of someone who has different proportions than me. So this video will feature Mama Jackson, AKA Streetwear Mom. Go follow her on Instagram. I am five foot six and I have a short torso with long legs and very skinny calves and ankles. My mom is 5'2 and she has a long torso with short legs and she has thicker calves and ankles. Different body proportions require different types of shoes for certain outfits to look more balanced. So hopefully, you know, having my mom as an additional model will help everyone find the right choice of shoe for them. Now, if you don't know what your proportions are, I have a video all about it that you can watch right up here and I'll also link it in the description box down below. I highly recommend checking out that video before continuing with this one. If you're new here and you would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and let's get started. Now, pants is kind of a hefty category because it includes all different styles of pants like jeans, trousers, sweatpants, but even within those types, there's straight leg, boot cut, flared, high-waisted, low-rise, slouchy, boyfriend, mom. And then on top of that, you also have to consider the fabric weight or fabric density. For example, if you're wearing really thick and heavy denim, you might want to pair it with a certain type of shoe to balance it out. Now, I made that sound way more complicated than it actually is, so to make this a little bit easier, let's talk about it with visual examples. And let's explore pant leg styles first. A general rule that I like to follow is the wider the pant leg, the more narrow the shoe should be. For bootleg, flared, and wide leg pants, I find that shoes with a more narrow silhouette and toe box tend to look the most flattering. I also think that the silhouette of the shoe is more important than the type of shoe. And let me explain what I mean by that. So for example, if you're going for a casual look, you might want to pair your boot cut jeans with sneakers, but sneakers with a narrow silhouette and toe box look better with this style of jeans than a chunky sneaker. They're both sneakers, but one style is more flattering than the other because one has the proper silhouette for this type of pant leg. Let's say you're going for a more dressy look. You might wanna pair your wide leg trousers with a pair of heels, but a pair of pumps, which are more narrow in silhouette, might look more balanced with this style of pants than chunky heeled shoes. They're both heels, but one style is more flattering than the other because one has the proper silhouette for this type of pant leg. Skinny leg pants are my least favorite type of pant. I don't like wearing them and I find that they make me look really imbalanced because I have really narrow hips and long skinny legs. My mom, on the other hand, will wear them because they look more harmonious with her body because she has thicker calves. So she just looks more balanced and harmonious when she wears them versus when I do. For people with skinny legs, if you do like wearing them, I think that a skinny leg pant is another type of style that requires a more narrow 
narrow shoe profile. Basically anything that is not platformed thick or chonky because otherwise it would just totally throw off our balance. So whether that's a skinny sneaker, sandals, knee-high boots, you can wear combat boots as long as they're not too chunky. You can also wear a ballet flat, which is a style that I personally do not love, but if you like them, they're a great option. And you can even wear loafers, but make sure that it's a loafer with a narrow profile and not one that's too chunky. Now, if you have thicker legs like my mom does, you have a little bit more leeway with the shoe profile when wearing skinny leg pants because there's not that noticeable of a contrast compared to those with skinnier legs. Straight leg pants are pretty versatile, but I would opt for shoes that have a lower profile, so choosing low top sneakers over high tops. Now, when it comes to boots, you can wear boots with a higher shaft as long as the shaft is skinny or it's really close to the calf because you wanna make sure that the shaft fits underneath the pant leg or else it's going to bunch up around the ankles and just look really awkward and, you know, it's, it's just not sexy, you know? Now, we just talked about style of pant legs, but there are other types of pants that don't quite fit into those categories, so I'm just gonna pop them in here real quick. With the insurgence of Y2K fashion, cargo pants are super hot right now, and I think they're actually pretty versatile. I would wear them with sneakers, chunky or narrow, it doesn't matter. I would wear them with sandals, you know, it's giving army pants with flip flops. I would even wear them with heels. I love open-toed heels with cargo pants, but I've also seen them styled with pumps and they look great. So I really think that cargo pants are pretty versatile and you can style them with all types of different shoes. I love sweatpants. You would have to unalive me before I give up my sweatpants. You would have to pry them out of my cold dead hands. But there's nuance to sweatpants that I feel like not a lot of people talk about. There are two main sweatpants silhouettes. So there's like that more slim profile sweatpants and then there's like the baggier type of sweatpants. And these two types of sweatpants give off a very different vibe and they require very different types of shoes. Sweatpants with a more slim profile give off that really like put together mature type of vibe. They also can look nice with an exposed ankle. So low top sneakers look really nice. Flat shoes like loafers or ballet flats look good. You can even wear sandals if that's your vibe, especially if you live in a coastal city. In contrast, the baggy fit sweatpants give off a more cool, young, like street kind of vibe. I personally think that exposed ankles look really awkward with this type of sweatpants, so I prefer styling these with high top sneakers or boots with a higher shaft like these Timberlands. Another thing to consider when choosing shoes for your outfit is fabric weight and fabric density. The weight and type of fabric that's used in a garment can change the entire feel or vibe of a look. For example, a wool trouser can look more formal or put together while a linen trouser has a more casual feel. Wool is also a heavier fabric with more structure while linen is a lightweight fabric with less structure. The differences in these fabrics require a totally different type of shoe even if they're like a similar style of pant. If you're wearing trousers with a heavier and more structured fabric like wool, the vibe of your outfit is gonna look a little more put together and you're gonna wanna wear a shoe with a lot of structure. Now, if you're wearing trousers with a more lightweight fabric like linen, you can choose a more light and airy type of shoe like sandals, for example. A lot of people find skirts kind of difficult to style because there are so many different factors to consider, like the length, the, the style, the fabric, the occasion. But there's also another added layer of considering your body's proportions. My mom and I make entirely different styling choices when it comes to picking shoes for skirts because we just have very different proportions. There are so many different types of skirts out there, but in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the styles that are more popular and accessible. 
A-line skirts are an absolute classic that have truly stood the test of time. And fun fact, A-line skirts actually got their name from Christian Dior. Um, he had, a, I think it was a spring collection in 1955 called the A-line, and that's literally where these skirts got their name from. So these are tried and true, honey. A-line skirts are considered to be the most flattering type of skirts for all types of women because they are fitted at the waist and then they flare out. They're kind of like a more modernized hoop skirt, except for hoop skirts kind of flare downward and create that curve shape, whereas A-line skirts flare out into a straight line and they kind of make like that A shape. That's why it's called an A-line skirt. And they're especially flattering for people who have narrow hips because of that flare out. So we love them in this house. And I feel like a really great general tip for skirts is the longer the skirt, the lower the shoe should be. And I don't mean low as in the heel height, I mean low as in like the profile of the shoe. I find that A-line mini skirts are the most versatile and easy type of skirt to style. You can wear sandals, platforms, pumps. I've worn them with combat boots, high and low top sneakers, you name it. But different proportions may prefer some shoes over others. Let me explain. Because I have long legs and a short torso and my calves are really skinny, I can still look balanced when I wear crew socks or high boots with my mini skirts. My mom, on the other hand, has shorter legs and a long torso and she has thicker calves. So crew socks or high boots would be too overwhelming for her and make her legs look even shorter. So she prefers shoes with a lower profile. She says that for her, the lower the shoe, the better because it allows her legs to appear more elongated. Midi skirts look great with low profile shoes like sandals, low top sneakers, and heels that don't have an ankle strap. And the only reason I say that is because midi skirts stop around like the mid calf area. And when shoes have a strap around the ankle, it can kind of make that area look a bit busy. I mean, it also depends on like what the shoe looks like and what the skirt looks like. But it, like when I think of midi skirts, I just prefer not to have an ankle around the strap. I mean, a strap around the ankle. <laughs> My mom does not like wearing midi skirts because she says it emphasizes the thickness of her calves. She really prefers a mini skirt or a maxi skirt. There is no in between for her. Now there is this trend that is super hot right now where people are wearing denim midi skirts with knee high boots, which I think can look really cute, but you really have to understand your proportions really well to be able to pull that off. If you're watching this video, you're probably in the more like beginning stages of your personal style journey. So at this point, I would recommend like getting more comfortable with conventional pairings. And actually this would be a good time to mention this. There are really no rules in fashion and you don't need to follow any of the guidelines in this video if you don't want to. But I found that my personal style improved significantly when I got more comfortable with like conventional style rules because it served as more of like a foundational education for me. Like it really helped me to learn the basics before I started branching out and experimenting with different silhouettes and different styles and things like that. I would say it helped me be more analytical and intentional about fashion as opposed to just like throwing something together and hoping it worked, which is something I did a lot. <laughs> But anyway, let's get back to these skirts. For maxi A-line skirts, you really want to avoid high profile shoes here. So stick to lower profile shoes, nothing too chunky or else you risk looking very bottom heavy. Also, if your maxi skirt is long enough to cover your shoes, then you don't really need to bother with this. <laughs> Pencil skirts are another classic. They are a wardrobe staple for so many women, especially ones that work in corporate environments. And because of this, they have a very sophisticated feel to them. Unlike other skirts, pencil skirts are very difficult to dress down, um, especially if they're made from a material like wool, which as I mentioned before, is a very like elevated type of fabric. I would absolutely avoid sneakers with this type of skirt. If you're gonna wear boots, the shaft should be short and close to the calf. So for example, like a sock booty. 
Uh, pumps are a tried and true pairing for pencil skirts, but you can also wear strappy sandal heels. We're gonna focus on three styles of shorts here, denim, athletic, and tailored. Obviously, denim shorts are going to have a very solid casual vibe to them. You really cannot dress these up. Once you've put on those denim shorts, you have committed to the aesthetic. So the more obvious options for denim shorts are casual shoes like sneakers and sandals, but you can wear boots like denim shorts with cowboy boots. It's really hot right now if you're into that trend. My mom, on the other hand, really likes wearing denim shorts with sandals because it elongates her legs um, or she'll wear a running shoe, you know, depending on the occasion. Athletic shorts are another style that's going to have a very obvious casual vibe. I honestly would not wear any type of shoe that is not a sneaker with these types of shorts. For biker shorts, Princess Diana is the blueprint with the crew socks and sneakers, but if you have shorter legs, you might want to forego the crew socks and just wear ankle socks. For sweat shorts or basketball shorts, I would also wear crew socks and sneakers. I'm just a very huge fan of that look. Now, tailored shorts are way more versatile than the other two shorts that I previously mentioned because you can dress those up or dress those down. To dress them down, I would do a strappy sandal or crew socks with sneakers, and to dress them up, I would probably do like a loafer or even an open-toed heel. Now, I have my own preferences and personal style that I have crafted and curated throughout the entirety of my life, so the way that I styled these items might be totally different from the way that you style them. But all of the information in this video about fabric density and pant leg styles and shoe profile and silhouette, etc. All of these things can be applied to any outfit regardless of your personal style or whatever the current trends are. My mission on this channel is to help shift our culture of overconsumption to something that's more intentional and sustainable. Like I want to help you find your style and help you figure out what your preferences are so that you can be more intentional with how you shop. Like I want everyone to find out what looks and feels good for them instead of relying on micro trends to tell us how we should dress. It's better for the environment, it's better for your bank account, and it honestly, it's better for your sense of self. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see a part two, or if you have any other video requests, please leave them down in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.